Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to audit case 8.1, which is a meniscectomy. Let's look at our diagnoses. Number one is internal derangement of the right knee. Number two is impingement syndrome of the left shoulder. And number three is arthritic pain complaints of the left ankle. So our procedures performed are an arthroscopic partial medial and lateral, lateral meniscectomy. And number two is an abrasion chondroplasty of areas of excessive redundant articular cartilage wear of the medial femoral condyle grade two and three and a therapeutic injection of the left shoulder subacromial space five with 0.25% marcaine, 20 milligrams of kinolog, and number four is arthritic symptoms left ankle and a secondary injection of five cc's of 0.25% marcaine and 10 milligrams of kinolog. So our procedure says after a satisfactory administration of general anesthesia and with the patient in a supine position, the left shoulder and ankle were addressed under sterile technique undergoing subacromial injection at the shoulder of the above noted preparation as well as under sterile technique. Anterolateral approach about the ankle undergoing an injection this was then followed by prepping and draping of the knee on the right side in a routine manner. Routine arthroscopic portals were established upon entering the confines of the knee proper. There were, was a suprapatellar plical entity that was very broad and stout. This was trimmed back. A medial plical ent entity secondarily was trimmed back for the sake of visualization of the fat pad. The medial compartment at this time had grade two to three arthritic changes about the redundant flap and the articular cartilage of the medial femoral condyle. This was trimmed back to the stable margins. There was a degenerative superior surface tear of the meniscus that was loose, redundant, and excursible. At this setting, we trimmed it back to stable margins. The intraarticular notch was obscured with fat pad and ligamentum mucosum. These were removed for the sake of visualization. Cruciate structures were otherwise unremarkable. The lateral compartment at this time showed superficial grade one changes of the lateral tibial plateau and a radial tear of the meniscus. Given its size and location, after extensive debridement, this was trimmed back to stable margin. At the completion of this element of the procedure, the knee was injected with 5 cc's of 0.25% marcaine and 20 milligrams of kinolog. He tolerated the procedure as well. Sterile dressings were applied. Once the portal sites were closed, there were no complicating events. So our instructions tell us that one or more of the following codes are incorrect and to, incorrect, to indicate the correct or incorrect codes. So the professional services the codes assigned are a knee arthroscopy 29880 with modifier right, another knee arthroscopy 20610 with modifier 59 and right, ankle injection code 20605 modifier 59 left modifier, uh, plaquectomy 29875 with modifier 59, and then our diagnoses of the meniscal tear medial S8. 3.241a, meniscal tail tear lateral, S8 3.21281a, plical syndrome, M67.51, shoulder impingement syndrome, M75.42, shoulder osteoarthritis, M19.012, and arthritis, M19.90. So let's start by first looking at our diagnosis codes. So open up your ICD-10 CM diagnosis book. Let me share my document camera. Okay, so the first code we are going to look up is S83. So let's go to S83. Go back to what it said, S83241A, S83241A, 
241, which is other tear of medial meniscus current injury right knee. And then the seventh character, A, is for initial encounter. So that's correct. Our second diagnosis code was 783281 with the seventh character, A. So if we go back to that one, that is other tear of lateral meniscus current injury right knee with the seventh character, A, for current injury. So that's correct because we need to code both the medial and the lateral. Then our next diagnosis was the Pleichel syndrome M6751. So flip now to M6751 in your book. M6751, Pleica syndrome, right knee. So that's correct. Then we have shoulder impingement syndrome, M7542. So let's flip and see if that one's correct. M7542, impingement syndrome of left shoulder. So that code is correct. And next we have shoulder osteoarthritis M19012. So let's look at that code. So M19012, primary osteoarthritis, left shoulder. That is correct. And our last code is arthritis, M1990. And if we go back, arthritis, not otherwise specified, M1990. So that is correct as well. Now let's look at our CBT code. So get out your CBT manual. We know all of our diagnoses codes are correct. Now let's look at our CBT codes. So the first CBT code we have is 29880. So 29880 is an indented code, so we have to go to the beginning, which is arthroscopy knee surgical. And remember, we switch out our indented behind the semicolon. So arthroscopy knee surgical, and then our code would read with meniscectomy, medial and lateral, including any meniscal shaving, including debridement shaving of articular cartilage, chondroplasty, same or separate compartments when performed. And we also have like some changes noted here and some CPT assistance where there's reference about this code. So that's always important to note. So that code looks pretty good. So 29, 880, and then we have right, the modifier RT, because it was our right knee. Then our next one, 20610, let's look at that code. 20610, which is... an arthrocentesis, aspiration and or injection, major joint or bursa, shoulder, hip, knee, subacromial bursa, without ultrasound guidance. And again, there's some notes here, CBT assistant, clinical changes. So let's go out to one of our coding encoders. Uh, since we're working with quad Quadramed, the nuance, Clintegrity, let's go there and we are going to look at these coding clinics because it will help us 
get some coding advice. So up here at the top, we're going to click on our references. Then we're going to go to the CPT assistant. So both of these had CPT assistants. So you just want to look at these and see if there's any helpful information. Oh, here we go. This one's helpful. If a surgical arthroscopy of the knee is performed 29870 to 29889, and our arthroscopy code was 29880, so it's in that range. And the question is, after withdrawal of the scope and portal suture, the surgeon injects uh, bufacaine for post-op pain management directly into the knee joint. May 20610 be reported in addition to the arthroscopy code. So the CBT assistant says, code 20610 arthrocentesis, aspiration and or injection, major joint or bursa, should not be re reported when performed concurrent with another intra-articular procedure like a knee arthroscopy. Unless this is performed at a different anatomical site than the arthroscopy. So right there we know we cannot code 29880 and 20610 together that that violates the coding guidelines because 20610 would be included in 29880. So we've identified one code that we do not need. Now let's go back to our report and look at the next code. An ankle injection 20605. So let's go to our book and look at that. 20605, arthrocentesis, aspiration or injection, intermediate joint or bursa. So the one we just looked at a minute ago was major joint. This one is intermediate. Now the one we just looked at was for the subacromial, and that was part of the arthroscopy. But this one is for the ankle. So if we go back to our documentation, this ankle arthritic pain, and then at the bottom of our report, They injected the ankle with the secondary injection of 5 cc.25% marcaine and 10 milligrams of kinolog. So that is a different procedure than the knee arthroscopy. So yes, we are going to code that ankle injection. Next, we have the plicectomy 29875. Let's go look at that code. 29875. Okay, 29875. So again, it's an indented code, so it's going to read arthroscopy, knee, surgical, synovectomy, limited, so plica or self resection. Then it's a separate procedure. So separate procedure cannot be coded at the same time as another procedure unless they were two different areas, right? Well, these were both on the right knee. So we cannot code 29875. It is part of the 29880 code and it cannot be assigned when a more comprehensive 29880 is coded. So the codes we would assign are all our diagnosis codes and then the 29880 and 20610 for our procedure. So if you want to go into nuance, we can um, go to coding. Remember you go to code books. 
and you can just add your codes. SA3. Two four one A and hit enter and our next code S eight three two eight one zero not zero A sorry and our third diagnosis is the M6751, M6751. Our fourth diagnosis was M7542, then we have M19012, and M1990. And then we, again, we're only gonna have those two CBT procedures, 29880 with the modifier right. Now remember, you come over here to add your modifier in nuance. So we're gonna go down to see the right, right side. And then our second one, was that injection, which was 20605. And we have to show two modifiers, right? We have to show modifier 59 that it was separate because it's a different anatomical area oh, there we go 59 and we also want to show the left, because this was the left ankle. There we go, left. Okay, so once you're all done, again, if you wanted to come back up here and look at the incompletes and enter all your medical record account number, you could do that, but you do not have to. And that's how you enter your codes in quantum or nuance. Again, if you wanted to look them up, we come over here on the left-hand side and use this search function. But if you know the codes, you can just enter them right there. So if we look at our status up here. It tells me all the medical record numbers missing and PCS, which is good because you can see I entered the diagnosis codes in the PCS box instead of over here in the CM box. So it's always helpful to look at those edits at, at the top. So we would just come here and enter uh, all of our diagnosis codes again. Remember that ICD-10 PCS procedures are only used by inpatient facility coders when they're coding inpatient accounts, right? 
Everyone else, outpatient coders, physician office coders, use CPT for procedures. So POA status is only for inpatients. This was done in an outpatient setting. So we just need to change our patient type so that it is not asking for the POA indicators. So if we come up here to the top, that's where we would edit. So we're gonna edit that and change it to an outpatient. And then our POA indicators go away.